Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. You can subscribe to our podcast using your favorite podcast software, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or the Amazon Music Store at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives. And remember to purchase one of our Famous Investigator t-shirts at Famous.GreatDetectives.net before Tuesday to make sure that you get it in time for Christmas. Go over to Famous.GreatDetectives.net. That's Famous.GreatDetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers. The original air date, February 3rd, 1952, and the title is... The rub out. <laughs> of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Names, dates, and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Hello, dear friends. This is Gordon McRae. If I may, I'd like to take a minute of your time to tell you about tomorrow's Monday Night of Music on NBC. We all have fine programs planned for you tomorrow, and I know that you'll find listening enjoyment when you tune to this NBC station. Begin your listening with the voice of Firestone and its guest soloist, soprano Bidu Sayow. And then it's time for the Railroad Hour. And tomorrow night, I'll have Petite and lovely Mimi Benzel as my guest as we present the Sigmund Romberg, Oscar Hammerstein success, East Wind. I know you'll enjoy the romance-filled songs in the Railroad Hour production of East Wind. So be our guests tomorrow right here on good old NBC. And to top off your Monday night of music, tomorrow the telephone hour will present an all-operatic program featuring Ezio Pinza. So remember, for your Monday night of music on NBC, tune to this station tomorrow for the voice of Firestone, the Railroad Hour, and the Telephone Hour. But now, let's hear today's adventure with the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called The Rub Out. It is 9.30 p.m., July 23rd, 1936. The night is sticky hot. In the dimly lit dressing room of a border town fight arena, young, good-looking ex-cowpoke Johnny Buck is getting a last-minute rubdown from one of his handlers, Slim Corey. Hold still, cowboy. Man, you keep scrounging around like a frog in a frying pan. I'm plumb beat, Corey. Just plumb beat. You did a weak shutout last night. What time's it, Corey? Uh, reckon Sammy Windup's just about over. Yeah. Where's Mike Morales? Mike ain't coming, cowboy. What do you mean he ain't coming? Mike's my manager, ain't he? He's got to be in my corner tonight. Yeah, but you know he ain't coming. Yeah, he'll sure. He likes that dinero too much to stay away. All right, let me up. It's a wonder I got any hide left. All I get is a bad time. I wonder if guy can't sleep nights. Well, that's your own fault, cowboy. You was warned to keep away from that young filly. What filly are you talking about? You know I'm talking about Mike Morales' kid sister, Nina. Then don't go calling her no filly. What about Nina? Oh, the way I see it, Mike ain't kept her in a convent just so she can get mixed up with no leather pushing. Yeah, Mike should talk. He'd starve if it weren't for me eating leather every week. Where's Chico? Got to have somebody in my corner size a lousy rubber. Ah, you got to relax, cowboy. Relax? How's a guy going to relax when my manager takes a powder? My second takes a walk and forgets to come back. You go out and find it. Let me wind up. It's almost over. Get ready, cowboy. Huh? Chico, where's Mike? Hey, well, what do you need, Mike? You doing the fighting? Yeah. I have a mind to get dressed and hightail the heck out of here. 
What's the matter, cowboy? You getting cheeky? Why, you crummy little... Hey, look, get your hands off me, you... Oh, oh, on, kill you. That's for us, cowboy. We're on now. Let go, Chico. Turn them loose. You'll never be no loser. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hey, what are you so excited about? I didn't mean nothing, cowboy. Let's go. What's around? Seventh coming up. How you feeling? Beat. Plum beat. Uh, what's wrong, cowboy? Check it. Feels like a hot rod lippity cut into a cornfield. Should have punched with the redhead from the start instead of boxing him. Okay, cowboy. You've been boxing long enough. Go out and slug with Kim. Yeah. Might as well go out punching. Adios, amigo. This is seventh round, cousin. As usual, Red Keeler's out of his corner like a Texas wildcat putting out at the poor little old Easter rabbit. On the phone, Johnny Bucks just got off his car pony. He's trading punches with Keeler's smack dab over our microphone. Something's got to give. It's Johnny Bucks. The car pokes on the ropes. He's bleeding from the cut over his right eye. Boom! Buck just tossed Keeler with the right hand. Keeler's down. Red Keeler's down. The referee is waving Johnny Buck to a neutral corner. Today's carpool don't seem to understand. Now he turns to go. He's staggering. Johnny Buck has just collapsed to the canvas. Oh, this arena has turned into an insane asylum. Red Keeler's grabbing for the ropes. He's climbing to his feet. Keeler's manager's in the ring, screaming at the referee to count over Johnny Buck. The referee is starting to count over him. Johnny Buck was rushed to the hospital. Sheriff Haynes, present at the fight, went along to investigate. While at the hospital, he was told the fighter might have been poisoned. This prompted the sheriff to call the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and joined Sheriff Haynes in the hospital corridor. Sure glad you got here, Jace. The whole ruckus smells higher than a pole cat sitting on a hot stove. Hmm. How bad off is the kid, Sheriff? Pretty bad, Jace. Doc's in there with him now. Poison been identified? Not yet. I'd sure like to talk to Johnny Buck's manager. Is he around anywhere? Nope. What's more, he never even showed for the fight. What? You mean he wasn't in Buck's corner? No, he wasn't. Then when I learned Buck had been poisoned... This really reeks. Seems like Morales stayed away because he knew what was going to happen. Of course. Oh, I did see him outside the arena about eight tonight. Rushed up to me all in a sweat because his kid sister Nina was going to elope with Johnny Buck right after the fight. Said she was underage, wanted me to take her into custody if she showed up. That doesn't make sense. All Morales had to do was stick close to Johnny Buck. The girl would have to show sometime. Yeah. Gave me some story like if I stayed on the lookout at the arena, he'd be able to search for her among her friends. So far, i never seen hide in her hair of her. Where'd he go after he talked to you? Inside the arena. Said he had to see Chico Valdez. That's Johnny's trainer. Then I saw him drive off, oh, maybe 15 minutes later. I want Morales picked up, Sheriff. Right now, he stacks up a pretty fair suspect. Yeah, he sure had the motive. Could have done plenty in 15 minutes. Oh, Jace, that's Doc signaling. We can go in now. We weren't in there very long. Johnny Buck died mumbling Mike Morales' name. We checked the time for autopsy and sent out a pickup call for Morales... As we started out down the corridor, a pretty young Mexican girl came toward us, excitedly, almost in tears. Can you please tell me which room I can find Johnny Buck? Are you Nina Morales? Yes, I am. Uh, Nina, this is Ranger Pearson. He'd like to ask you a few questions. I've got to see Johnny. I know he's expecting me. Let's, let's go into the waiting room, Nina. Sit down, Nina. Why can't I see Johnny first? I'll come right back here. Honest, I will. In a few minutes. Nina, perhaps you can tell us why your brother wasn't in Johnny's corner tonight. I think because he's no longer Johnny's manager. Why did he break up with Johnny? On account of me. It was silly. Mike said he didn't want me running around with prize fighters. Said Johnny wasn't good enough for me. How would he know Johnny's good and kind? Mm. When did Mike find out about you and Johnny? I don't know for sure. He warned Johnny, but we still kept seeing each other. And last night, I know Chico saw us, and 
Well, when Johnny brought me home, there was Big Mike waiting for us. What happened? Well, when I told him Johnny and I were going to get married, he went wild. He slapped me, and then he and Johnny headed out. They fought? Johnny gave him a beating. What happened after that? He told Johnny they were through. He said before we could ever get married, he'd kill Johnny first. Yeah, Mike probably said that out of anger. Oh, he has a terrible temper. But I think he's going to feel differently after we're married. Thanks, Nina. That's all. I can go now? I can see Johnny? Yes. Uh, Nina? Yes? Nina, you don't want to see him. Not now. But I do. That's why I came. What's wrong? Anything happened to him? Is he? He's dead, Nina. I knew it. I could feel it. All the way down here, I knew it. Yesterday, Johnny promised me he'd quit the fight game. We were going to be so happy. While we were trying to calm the grief-stricken girl, a phone call came through from Haiti, a neighboring deputy who had picked up Mike Morales. I instructed him to meet us at the sheriff's office with Morales. Then we left, taking Nina with us in protective custody. It was almost 2.30 a.m. when Hafey reported to the sheriff in the outer office. Want to see Morales now, Jace? Yeah. Uh, Nina, why don't you go with the sheriff and wait in the other office while we talk to your brother? Do you mind? No, I don't mind. This way, Nina. Nina! What are you doing don't here? Don't talk to me. Nina, baby, honest. I, I was only thinking of you. I wanted you to go back to the convent to Nina, study. Nina, don't stay on me, Johnny. Oh, the no. Do, do, do. No, no, no. Bring him in, Sheriff. Inside. Uh, what did she just say to you? Yeah. Uh, uh, she complained about a headache. Your sister speaks Spanish better than you understand it, Morales. Sit down. Uh, she's upset. She, she don't know what she's saying. You know about Johnny Buck? Yes. Yes, I know. He's a terrible thing. When did you last see him? I I didn't see Johnny since night before the fight. That's not true, Mike. I saw you go into the arena myself last night. Yes, but I only went to take Chico to see the promoter. To turn over the purse to Chico. I didn't want Johnny to have money so he could run away with Nina. I'll check that. Okay, check. Go ahead. Didn't you go to Johnny's dressing room? Whoever said I did is a pack of lies. Didn't you have to go to the dressing room to get Chico? I did not. I met him outside the promoter's office. Mm -hmm. Where you been all night? All over. Looking for Nina. When you should have been in your fighter's corner. My sister, she is more important to me. You knew something was going to happen to Johnny. Isn't that why you stayed away from the fight? No, I didn't know he was going to get killed. Who said he was killed? I... I don't know. I thought somebody... Somebody said... You told Johnny you'd kill him if he eloped with your sister. What were you going to do, Morales? Shoot him or strangle him? No, no, I wouldn't do these things. What would you do? Maybe poison him? Nothing. I wouldn't do nothing. Caramba, came in this is the hombre. Mm. You've been drinking, Morales. Yeah. I had a few on account of poor Johnny. I, I've been trying to forget. Yeah. Well, I want you to remember when I talk to you again in the morning. In the meantime, maybe you better spend the night here. Here? In jail? I got to go home. I got to take care of Nina. You need sleep, Mike. If you go home, you'll be up all night arguing with Nina. Ranger's right. You know the mood she's in. Yeah. I don't want no trouble. All right, Mike. Let's go. Oh, hey, Pete. Uh, put Mike in the overnight tank and then drive Nina home. Actually, Jace, we don't have enough to hold Morales... Except maybe a drunk charge. Sure, drunk charge. Maybe a night in the bullpen will loosen his tongue in the morning. Yeah. Hey, Jace, what did Nina yell at Mike in Spanish? She said, you killed my Johnny, or words to that effect. 
Think she'll tell that to a jury? I doubt it. Uh, nothing more we can do now until we get the autopsy report, Sheriff. Let's get some sleep. I left the sheriff's office and checked in at a local hotel. Seemed like I'd hardly fallen asleep when the phone began to ring. My watch said it was 6.30 a.m. Hello. Chase. Yeah, who's this? Sheriff Haynes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Sheriff. Are you sure you're awake? I am now. What's up? The doc just phoned. He's completed the autopsy report. Good. What does it show? Wasn't even a trace of poison found in the stomach, Chase. Wasn't? What did kill Johnny Buck? Nitroglycerine. Nitroglycerin? That's right. Showed up in the bloodstream. Hmm. Jace, don't they use nitroglycerin for certain heart conditions? To pick up the heart, not explode it. Hey, wait a minute. Seems to me there are several cases on record where poison nitrates were absorbed through the skin. What you getting at, Jace? Nitroglycerin is an odorless liquid, dissolves in alcohol. Johnny could have had a rub down before he entered the ring. If the rubbing liniment had been spiked... His skin would absorb enough of it in the heat of action to kill him. Think you got something, Chase. How soon can we get into the arena? Anytime you say. Why? If I'm right about the liniment, Sheriff, we should find signs of it in the dressing room. Meet you there in ten minutes. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. For almost two centuries, Americans have enjoyed the valuable privileges of freedom. Now, freedom needs each American to dedicate himself to its preservation. We must not allow our liberties to be endangered by neglect of our duties as citizens. During this year of rededication... Join with your fellow Americans in reaffirming the principles on which this country is founded and the safeguarding of those principles. Make it your business to see that federal, state, and local governments are conducted honestly. Help to maintain the good morale of your sons and daughters in the armed forces. Learn the facts about all candidates and issues. Then vote for the one you believe in. Make the most of every minute on your job. Produce as much as you can and thus increase our military and economic strength. Work for better schools and a better community. Guard your American heritage of freedom. It needs you. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, The Rub Out. In the dressing room at the fight arena, we scraped up a dry residue from the floor and rubbing table and had it flown to the lab at Austin for immediate analysis. We released Morales after another talk, assigned a deputy to tail him, and then took off for a local gym where Chico and Corey worked with other boxers. It was 11.15 when we got there. Lots of early cauliflower here, Jace. Yeah, I'll stick to the garden variety. You see either of Johnny's handlers, Sheriff? Yep, that's Chico, holding the sandbag with the big heavyweight. Now let's get over there. Come on, come on, Buster. Get some lard behind that hook, will you? Zing into the bag. Make believe it's your brother-in-law, huh? Uh, Chico. Yes. Uh, can you come here? Oh, hi, Sheriff. Sure, sure. Come on, snap into a little shadow box, Buster, huh? This is Ranger Pearson, Chico. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Ranger. You know Johnny Buck died last night? Yeah, yeah. It was too bad, huh? Too bad. Eh, great kid, Johnny. Sure popped for the title in a couple of years. He couldn't miss. You were his rubber? No, no, I was his trainer. A uh, second, you know. <laughs> the brain trust. <laughs> Robin, that, that's Corey's job. Were you in the dressing room with Johnny right up to ring time? Uh, most of the time. I wouldn't leave that kid. He was like my own brother. Any outsiders in the dressing room? Maybe. Not while I was there. How about Morales? Mike? No, no. Mike was never in the dressing room. He was at the arena. I talked to him myself. Well, all I know is I met him outside the promoter's office. We had to talk to him about Johnny's dog. Well, that didn't take all night. No, no, no. Mike was there only a few minutes. I had to stick around. Well, if Mike left by himself, how do you know he didn't go to Johnny's dressing room? Gee, gosh, I don't know. Maybe he did. I, I wouldn't swear. 
Is Slim Corey around here? Corey? No, no, no. He ain't here to play. He's supposed to work with a couple of fighters, but he sent the word that he's sick. Hey, can't believe a word that he says. He have loco most of the time. Hey, hey what's up, Ranger? Anything wrong about last night? Oh, just the usual questions we ask when a fighter dies after a bout. That's a likely-looking heavyweight you got there, Chico. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, sure, nothing like Johnny Buck. Yeah, you better get back to your boy. His shadow's going ahead on points. Yeah, that's what happens when I leave the big bomb. <laughs> well, uh, so long, Ranger, Sheriff. Anything else you want to know, you can always find me here. Okay, I'll remember that. You got Corey's address, Sheriff? Yeah, Jace. Let's go. I guess this cord's to ring the doorbell. Maybe Corey ain't home. That's right again. Who is it? Sheriff Haynes, Corey. Come on in, the door's open. Sorry, I, I can't get out of bed, Sheriff. What's wrong with you? I don't know for sure. Never felt like this before. Guess it's on account of last night. What happened to Johnny? Did you rub him down before the fight? Yeah, needed it real bad. Where'd you get the liniment? Um, Chico, he brung it along in his satchel. Chico's badly broken up about Johnny. Chico? Who are you kidding, mister? Why? Didn't they get along? Heck no. Not since Johnny started beating his time with Mike's kid sister. Oh, Chico didn't like that, huh? Shucks, he went plumb loco when he heard about Johnny and Nina fixing to get hitched. Why, the night of the fight, Chico was so crazy mad he wouldn't come near the dressing room. <laughs> well, when he did, he and Johnny had a ruckus... Were you in the dressing room all the time Johnny was there? Yeah, most every minute at the time. Did Morales show up while you were there? No, Mike never showed at all. He... Gosh, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Somebody got an aspirin? You don't need an aspirin, Corey. You need a doctor. We're going to get you to a hospital and fast. <laughs> We took Corey to the hospital and waited for the diagnosis. Blood tests confirmed what we'd suspected. Corey was suffering from a trace of nitroglycerin poisoning. And immediate measures were taken to save him. When we went back to the sheriff's office, the lab report from Austin was waiting for me in the teletype room. What's it say, Jase? Listen to this, Sheriff. Tests completed. Scrapings from dressing room floor and table definitely nitroglycerin. Impurities in residue is type of clay usually found in commercial dynamite. I don't get it. What has dynamite got to do with it? Uh, simple enough. Dynamite contains nitroglycerin. The clay holds it together. The nitro could have been dissolved in alcohol and strained through a cloth. Well, I'll be darned. But how did Corey get poisoned with this stuff? He most likely got into the pores of his hands while giving Johnny Buck his rub down. The reason Johnny went so fast was because his entire body was saturated with a poison liniment. Then our problem right now is to find the party who mixed the stuff. And Chico sure had a motive. If Corey was telling the truth, and I think we might get that answer at Mike Morales. Uh, oh, come in, Ranger. Sure. Mike. What do you know about Slim Corey? He's a good boy. Corey worked with my fighters for years, even before I took on Johnny. How did Corey get along with Johnny Buck? Oh, he was a good friend. <laughs> Always filling him up with advice. I see. Is Nina around? Yeah, sure. Nina! What do you want? The ranger and the sheriff are here. Come down. Poor kid. We just got through making the arrangements. For Johnny. How are you feeling now, Nina? How should I feel? I'd like to ask you something, Nina. I told you all I know. About Chico. Chico? What do I have to do with Chico? Well, weren't you good friends at one time? Never. I couldn't stand him. He's a sneak. He was always spying on me. He was jealous of Johnny? Crazy jealous. Mike, huh? was it Chico who told you about Johnny and Nina? Yes. Chico told me. He was always telling me all kinds of things. Things I couldn't believe. Did he tell you to get rid of Johnny? What do you mean, get rid of Johnny? Break up with him, split. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he put that idea in my head. He was the one. I see. I'm sorry to have troubled you again, Mike. Nina. Let's go, Sheriff. 
Looks like Chico's our boy, Jace. Everything points to him like a signpost. Strong jealousy motive, deliberate lies about his friendship for Johnny Buck, a dressing room brawl with Johnny on the night of the fight. And he was the one who gave Corey the rubbing liniment. Yeah. Now all we need is definite proof that he spiked it to send Mr. Valdez to the big chair at Huntsville. <laughs> We stopped to pick up a search warrant and then went on to Chico's home. It was exactly 3.47 p.m. when we pulled up in front of a weather-beaten two-room adobe on the outskirts of town to see if we could find the final link of evidence that would help convict Chico for the murder of Johnny Buck. No one here, Jace. Yeah, door might be unlocked. I'll try it. It isn't. You want to pick the lock? Yeah, let's go around the back. Hey, hold it a second, Sheriff. What? I want to have a look at this trash box. Okay. Meantime, I'll see if the back door is unlocked. The back door's locked, too. There's a window open on the side. Good. You find something, Chase? Yeah, a very interesting-looking piece of cloth. Hmm. Sheriff, this might be it. This rag? Yeah. Could have been used to strain the nitroglycerin. You really think so, Jace? I can almost tell that residue blindfolded. I might as well take the trash box and all as evidence. Want me to give you a hand with it? No, I can handle it. I'll park this stuff in the car. Meantime, you go inside through that window and open the door for me, will you? Okay. Shut up, shut up. Are you crazy? I said shut up. Give me your gun. Now you better shut up. You got a wife and kids. You better keep shut up. Why are you crazy? Spill this gun in your throat. One more sound from you and I blow a hole through it. Now roll over your face. Right, dig into the floor and don't you move. Now I unlock the door for your range of frame. I give him a little surprise. Don't you turn your head. Oh. Jace, you're bleeding. I got my shoulder. I'll be okay. Looks pretty bad. Yeah, you look kind of battered yourself, Sheriff. Yeah, I feel that way, too. Oh. Chico, dead? No. Chico? Oh, my legs. They hurt me. Oh, they hurt something awful. Yeah? Well, that's what you get, Chico. When you start messing around with dynamite. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Hello, friends. This is Jack Parr. I'll be with you later this evening with the $64 question, but right now I'd like to remind you about some of the other great shows this evening on the NBC radio network. In just a few minutes, you'll hear the big show with Tallulah Bankhead and a big array of guest stars. And, of course, Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct the big show orchestra and chorus. You will hear 90 minutes of scintillating comedy and music today on the big show. And then, right after the big show, stick around for the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show with Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, Brother William, and the entire Harris household. It's a program that's sure to please you. Later today, Theater Guild on the Air will bring you stars from Hollywood and Broadway in an exciting Broadway play. And right after Theater Guild on the Air, I'll be back with a pocket full of money and the $64 question. I'll be talking to a lot of contestants tonight, and maybe you'll hear one of your neighbors. So why not stay tuned right now to the NBC for a whole evening of great entertainment. I'll be looking for you in our radio audience tonight. And now, let's get back to the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Ranger Pearson recovered from his wounds and was present at Chico Valdez's trial ten weeks later when Chico confessed to the premeditated murder of Johnny Buck. On January 13, 1938, Chico paid the supreme penalty for his crime in the electric chair at the state penitentiary in Huntsville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae. 
McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Herb Bygren, Herb Ellis, Nestor Paiva, Parley Bear, and Peggy Weber. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Will Gould, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Al Gibney speaking. Next, The Big Show brings you 90 minutes of music and comedy on NBC. Welcome back. Well, we get a lot of boxing stories. For our winter break, we actually did Boxing Week last year. And that technically is just Boxing Week 1 because there are just so many options to go through. I guess this one will probably, if we do more Boxing Weeks, this will be what? Boxing Week 4 or something that this would end up in. But it's interesting to have a real-life story rather than a fictional one. The method of murder here is diabolically clever by giving the nitroglycerin in a rubdown right before a fight. Because many of the symptoms of a nitroglycerin overdose, like short of breath or blurred vision could also come through a boxing uh, match. And so doing it that way, the symptoms are masked and there's far less chance that the victim is going to be able to get help. Once again, Jace Pearson gets shot. I'm certain this is the third time, maybe the fourth time, in 60-odd episodes that he's gotten shot. This, of course, wasn't the most severe time. Now, of course, Jace's adventures are based on a lot of Texas Ranger cases, so he's probably representing three different Rangers, but it does, I guess, show how dangerous the job can get. Speaking of danger, I found myself during the questioning of the guy who gave the rubdown say to myself, I think he needs medical attention. But Jace waited till the questioning was done. I probably would have finished on the way, but, you know, that's just me. But I guess they wanted to conclude the scene with the dramatic note that he was going to the hospital. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Jonathan. Jonathan's been one of our Patreon supporters since August. Currently supporting the program at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Jonathan. And that will do it for today. A reminder, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, you can subscribe using your favorite podcast software, including Overcast, Good Pods, and the Amazon Music app at amazon.com slash otrdetective. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Saturday with another episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers, but coming up on Monday, listen to Sam Spade, where... Draw up a chair, Sam. Hmm? Sit down. Oh. Uh, yeah. uh, what's on your mind, Dick? You remember Claude Spicer, that grifter I sent over for that jewelry store hike back in 43? You never told me you were married, Dick. I'm very happily married. Now, please pay attention. Uh, uh, Claude Spicer, yeah. Yeah, I remember the caper. Wasn't there a dame involved? Well, Spicer had a girlfriend, but the, the cops gave her a good bill of health. Spicer went up for a five-year stretch. They spung him last month. Whatever happened to that dame? Uh, now, look, about Spicer. He gunning for you? You hit it. How scared of him are you? Well, enough to ask you for help, Sam. What's eating him? Just revenge? Sam, I wouldn't tell this to anybody but you. But all the facts of that caper didn't come out at that time. Uh, I uh, saw to that. How come? Well, I couldn't have stayed in business in San Francisco if it had been generally known that my partner was the inside man on that jewelry store heist. Mickey? Yeah, Mickey Linehan. Ah, oh, you and I are both great at choosing partners, Sam. They both deserved what they got. Only one difference. I sent up the killer that plugged my partner. Some people thought the way you gave evidence at Spice's murder trial wasn't so hot. Well, he was alibi Sam. In fact, the robbery was his alibi for the murder. I don't know how he managed it. I've been trying for five years to figure it out. Spice is afraid I might succeed someday. That's why he's out to get me. What's he waiting for? Oh, I don't know. He won't do it simple. He'll have a fancy plan like the other time. He's tricky. Where's he staying? At the Belvedere. Here's his mug. I kept a plant in the building for a couple of days, but he stayed holed up in his room. I think he spotted me. 
Okay, Dick, I'll give it a buzz. Now, wait a minute, Sam. Yeah? I'm not asking you to do this for love. Standard fee, 25 and whiskey money. Okay? Figure. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.